Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Game Theory Minecraft Do Not Kill the Ender Dragon by the Game Theorists. Now, I have not seen this, but yes, I am slowly leaning back into reacting to Game Theory again, and I think this would be an interesting video to, you know, get back into, you know, mainly because it's the most recent one and it literally just came out like three seconds ago, so I, you know, obviously get some, you know, get, get relevancy there. Yeah, get all that. And, yeah, honestly, uh, I, I want to hear what he has to say about why not to kill the Ender Dragon. Uh, genuinely curious by that title as well. And, yeah, that's really all I got to say. I genuinely, I think this has to relate with his other Minecraft theories, because I still know about that. Like, what he theorized about all the other Minecraft stuff, where it's like the Endermen are... are you know, all him, that kind of thing, or, not, yeah, you know, the Endermen were the ancient builders, all that, you know, yeah, 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 that, that stuff. I, we'll see, I guess, uh, we'll see. Maybe, maybe not, maybe it'll be like the Diamond Theory, where that literally didn't add anything. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys, reaching to the description, make sure to the game, theory, so the description noise, let's get right into it. Hey, it's the developer skin, right? Isn't that the developer, According Steve? According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that an ender dragon should be able to fly. What? Its wings are too small to get its massive body off the ground. The what? ender dragon, of course, okay. flies anyway. Because ender dragons B -movie reference? care what Minecraft builders think is impossible. Yeah, it's a B-movie reference. Oh, never mind. I was wrong about the skin. Dude, he's gonna, he's gonna fall. Oh, the Elytra. Oh. Hello, Internet. Well, yeah, they tried. Game theory. <laughs> tried with the animation there. Closing in on 15 million subscribers. By the way, did you know that every time you ring the notification bell, an Ender Dragon gets its wings? It's true. Try it. <gasps> yeah, it's true, guys. You know, it, yeah. So majestic. You did that. Yeah, true. And sure, I get that some of you yeah. might not want to give an. Ender Go subscribe to MadPat. Links in the description. You know, Don't subscribe to me. Subscribe to MadPat. Final boss of Minecraft. The game theory. At the end of today's episode, I think you're gonna be changing your mind. Today's theory is a bit overdue in my mind. Minecraft lore series, considering that my first video started, yeah. funnily enough, the end. End with a capital E, that is. In that episode, I mentioned the Ender Dragon only briefly, speculating that, based on the achievement for defeating it, titled Free the End, it seemed that the Ender Dragon was a tyrant oppressing the society of Endermen. Yeah. But after digging into more of the game's secrets, oh, what? I don't think that's the case anymore. Or, at least it's not the full story. Sure, it might be easy to look at the Endermen, the descendants of an ancient builder civilization trans- Isn't there a movie coming out and the Ender Dragon? Dragons, the antagonist. Of forest fruit and presume that they must be at the mercy of this powerful dragon that rules over them. But if we dig into the evidence, it actually tells us something very different. So today we're gonna focus on Jean and her story. Oh, sorry, is that name not ringing any bells for you? What? It should. It's confirmed by Minecraft creator, not what? other members of the Minecraft development team, that Jean is the official canonical name. What? Of <laughs> That's a thumbnail, by the way. Probably. The exact same way. A random comment by the franchise's creator. So. As far as I'm concerned, these two names are equally official. Anyway, today is Wait, so the dragon's name is Jean? Have been ignorant okay. For the past decade, the game has been begging, nearly screaming at us to not kill her. That's right. Really? We're supposed to spare the Ender Dragon. But to understand why, let's start at the beginning of the end. Huh. So to call Jean the nice segue. dragon is a bit misleading. Sure, she's the only dragon found in the end, but the important detail we tend to overlook is that it wasn't always that way. The end gives us clues that, at least at one point in history, multiple ender dragons made their home here. For evidence of this, just look at the end ships found throughout the dimension. Oh yeah, true, the head. Mounted onto their mass. I was like, Clearly the spoils yeah, of battles not mass. Dragons that once okay. populated this world. And this already tells us a lot of different things. Not only that dragons, plural once existed in this realm but also that a dragon hunting civilization oh civilization. okay got it so like the ender dragon is like the last of its kind basically and the ancient builders came there and killed all the dragons and then built the end city like all that right is that what is that what he's saying probably not the end city part but like the the part about like killing the dragons and the fact that like the ender dragon or gene I forgot yeah, it has a name. Uh, 
gene yeah is the last of its kind that apparently must have been pretty successful judging by i didn't actually think about that yeah and if you're asking who these well actually i think i did are, maybe well, i don't know the answer at this point should be fairly obvious probably that not society of ancient builders that we've been tracking ever since episode one of this minecraft lore series yeah. whoever constructed these massive flying ships were clearly builders the end ship is just this impressive feat of engineering with floors constructed from the finest obsidian there's also the fact that the ship is protected by shulkers a mob that you might be tempted to right off as just a weird creature shoved into the end to round out the enemies found there but it is so, so yeah much more finally getting in the shulkers the shulker in my i hate these things too by the way they're awful Bestiary, which as a reminder is written from the perspective of an in-world adventurer and researcher the shulkers purple blocks might actually be man-made to quote from the book the exterior of the really shulker may be a natural adaptation to help conceal it or it may be engineered by the city's architect oh that is a weird thing to call out there Book, yeah what logical leap to make i don't know about you but it okay seems to me like true heavily implying that that is the right answer that the shulkers yeah actually engineered by could be the other one but i don't know Still, for the sake of the theory let's think it's the, the second one instance of cleverly domesticating a native end species one thing is clear whoever built the end ships were serious about science so why were the builders hunting dragons were they merely trophy hunting tracking down the biggest and most dangerous game just because they could we've talked in past theories how the civilization demonstrated a lot of hubris convinced that their ability to build gave them the power of gods with power over life and death so could the war against true just be another that was proven in the like illager pillager theory right just that Case in point, the Elytra capes that yeah, you, you mean Elytra, right? Capes are kind of like the final or Elytra. In a traditional game of Elytra is just not how you right say it. Then, you get access to the end ship, and boom, you find this unique item that can only be found here. And not only are they exclusive to the end ships, but they have a texture and use that all but screams that they were made from the remains of defeated dragons. We clip their wings so that we I guess could obtain the power. A little bit of a stretch, but it's, it's fine. That the one major flying item that we obtain is being done in the one world where the main mob is a giant flying dragon. When the builders got to the end, they saw something they had yet Wait. to conquer, the skies. And so they Wait. Isn't it made out of phantom wings though? Cuz doesn't phantom membrane uh like if you isn't it if you put in elytra in or elytra, just not an elytra. Uh if you put it in an anvil with phantom membrane doesn't it like up the stats because when you think about it an iron pickaxe is made of iron if you put iron in an anvil with it it will get rid of the durability or it will up the durability of it same thing for every other thing even stone if you put cobblestone in and the you have a pickaxe that's low on durability it will go up like one notch in the durability uh, bar or whatever. I feel like I'm not wording this correctly, but basically I feel like I'm not actually not I'm not too sure But I'm certain this is a thing where you can repair Elytra wings with phantom membrane and just me putting two and two together I'm thinking that Elytra wings are made of phantom wings But for the sake of this theory we'll say that yes, they are made of from the ender dragons and it's not a bad theory, honestly. Not not a bad idea. They were determined to tame those skies, just like they had done to the overworld and later the nether. Fun fact, by the way, even though Elytra seems to True, be is he gonna get into the Warp Force wings, stuff? The wings that are one theory? Based on real life biology. Many insect species, especially beetles, possess Elytra. Though in the real world, the Elytra wings themselves aren't used for flying, but instead as a protective outer coating covering the hind wings that the beetles actually use for flying. Anyway, with that little biology lesson out of the way, what I'm really interested in here is the story of the okay. Ender Dragon. Or, I guess I should say, stories. Because when you actually look at the evidence inside the game, it seems to suggest a tale of multiple competing forces. On one hand, we have the End Ships, which seem to be pretty clear nice that there were builders who were into dragon hunting. So, the builders must have been anti-dragon, right? Well, that's where the story gets complicated. What? Because as anyone who's tried to take down the Ender Dragon knows, there are Ender Crystals spread across its habitat that are capable of healing it. True. 
true. Or something clearly wanted to keep this creature alive. And not only that, but the end crystals themselves are not naturally forming. They're objects that are wildlife are activists in the uh, in the end. And a and a gas tier, and then encasing it all in glass. Oh so yeah. What's especially telling about the end crystals is where you find them on top of obsidian pillars and inside of protective cages. In short, it looks like someone has gone through a lot of steps to make this ender dragon harder to kill. Not only by creating the end crystals, but by putting them on top of pillars that would be a challenge to reach, and then encasing them in a further protective barrier. And something tells me that Jean lacks the opposable thumbs capable of forging glass. Something else is well, yeah. here. Someone, some series of builders really wanted this dragon to Yeah, alive. true, I so guess. built an elaborate security system to make sure that that dragon stayed alive. And so we have evidence that suggests two conflicting stories. Yeah, true, I guess. That seems like the evidence. The builders who are into slaying dragons and a dragon protection defense grid that seems to be built for the opposite purpose. So what is going on here? Was there like I don't know. War? Can you tell me? Tell me. To the end, split into two oh factions. god. One oh god, please. Slayer, <laughs> Civil war over a uh, ender dragon. If that was the case, why would anyone in their right mind side with the dragons? After all, the ender dragon is a hostile mob. Why would someone take it upon themselves to defend the dragons? Well, yeah. it seems to suggest that the hunters were too successful to the point that they nearly hunted the ender dragon species to extinction. In real world ecological studies, there's some yeah. case selection. So we're actually we're actually going into real world stuff. She's ensure that their offspring survive. Case selection theory is founded on this concept. Yeah, I know. Between quality of offspring and quantity of offspring. On the quantity side of things, you have insects who can produce hundreds, thousands, even millions of tiny little babies in a lifetime. Needless to say that when you're laying that many eggs, each individual ant baby is not going to be getting a whole heck of a lot of tender love and care. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you got whales. With some species of whale, like the sperm whale, having a single baby every five to seven years. This means that each individual whale baby is going to get a lot more parental investment. It's whale parents Nintendo Switch. Thing like an only child. I bring this biological detour up because it brings up an interesting point about the animal kingdom. The larger an animal species is, the more likely it is to favor quality of offspring over quantity of offspring. True. Smaller animals like insects, rabbits, and birds can afford to have a lot of babies at once, while larger species like whales, elephants, and rhinos are much slower to reproduce. The ender dragon seems to- Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> We're actually bringing biology into this. Find a single egg. But what this reproductive strategy also means is that megafauna, the big animals, while being attractive targets for hunters, are also the species that are most at risk of being hunted to extinction because of how slow yeah. they produce. During the 1800s, so we're actually bringing real life into this. I mean, I guess it's fine. Hunted for their blood, yeah, that's fine. Reaching the point of extinction, and mind you, these were not high-tech humans. These were guys in wooden ships powered by sails and armed with harpoons. Still, even with rudimentary tools, those guys were capable of making some substantial damage. More recently the African elephant population has fallen from an estimated 12 million near the start of the 20th century to a mere 396,000 in the span of a hundred wow. years. With the main culprit being human hunters poaching them for their ivory tusks. Heck, even as far back yeah, as ice age, I know about that. scientists believe that, while well, yes, the changing climate wasn't doing the woolly mammoth any favors, a major contributing factor to its extinction were humans at a time when they were just literally cave people throwing around pointed sticks. And when you put it that way, what the end ship represents looks far less heroic. It seems a lot less like valiant heroes defying the odds to defeat an insurmountable foe, and it starts to look a lot more like humans doing what humans sadly do best. Yeah. Find a large, attractive target, hunt it down, and don't know when to stop. In fact, it's quite possible that there was no civil war between one faction of dragon hunting builders and another faction of dragon worshipping builders. Honestly, it could well, yeah. be a simple case of a single... That's what I was saying. Like, probably not. To the point of it's kind of funny that, that he actually thought thought of that verge of wiping this thing out time to reverse course in fact not only are we gonna stop hunting these things we're gonna do everything in our power to preserve the only one that we've got left and then steve came the along remaining defense mechanisms yeah. put in place to protect gene the last ender dragon and believe it or not but this lines up perfectly with the behavior that we see coming from our endermen the evolved versions of our ancient builders the endermen peacefully coexist with gene neither attacking the other but true to their roots the endermen are still capable of dragon hunting if forced to. If they're hit by splash damage from one of the Ender Dragon's attacks,
attacks while you're fighting it, the truce is off. They retaliate and begin fighting for their lives. That old dragon hunting spirit True. is hard. Unfortunately, any hopes that the Endermen might have for restoring the Ender Dragon population are meaningless. Is that a T-Pose Ender Dragon model? Too late. While the Ender Dragon does leave behind an egg, that dragon egg is inanimate. There was just it's a useless. dragon gene to lay the egg, but due to the lack of a male dragon, her egg isn't fertilized. It's incapable of hatching. Nothing more than a trophy. That's the reason? <laughs> okay. Dragons once and for all. This is also why I suspect that the player is unable to craft Elytra wings. Canonically, we lack the materials. Gene's True. Body can't be plundered and harvested for enough materials, and there are no other dragons that we can get the proper resources from. Therefore, we're left with the only Elytra wings that exist in the world in the end ship. Players of my yeah, that's true. Myself included, if they exist. Speculated that the act of freeing the end means liberating the Endermen and the rest of the end's inhabitants from the tyranny of the Ender Dragon. But it could be that the one who truly becomes free in that moment is the ender dragon herself left as the last of her species by yeah builders that so i was right at the beginning saying it was the last one preserved forever by those same builders who will never really be able to atone for what they did or reverse the consequences of those actions an ender dragon forever alone forever sad at the loss of a race so on one hand we absolutely shouldn't kill the last of the species but on the other hand it might just be freeing her from her quite literal eternal torment but hey, oh my god wait that's what that was that that's what the theory was at the ending oh my god what okay uh th that took a turn that i was not expecting but um yeah i'd say that this theory is solid there are a few flaws as i said with like the elytra wing stuff which i don't know if i'm correct on that but i think yeah I if i am right on that where you can repair uh elytra wings with phantom membrane then i don't know it's like that makes me think that they're made of phantom wings. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I could be wrong about, about even that. Even if you can do that. Because I don't know if you can do that, actually. But if you can do that, I'm probably just wrong. It's like, oh, yeah, of course you can. Because, like, technically, it's the same material to make wings. Like, yeah. Something like that. Ma yeah. Maybe. Uh, honestly, there are some things that this theory left out that I thought would have been more interesting if he covered. For example, there actually is a bigger link from the Ender Dragon to the End City, or for the Ender Dragon to the End City, because when you defeat the Ender Dragon, it unlocks the End City, unlocks the portal to it. And I feel like he should have at least covered that. Another thing I wish he did cover is the respawning ability of it, because you can actually bring the Ender Dragon back, and the way to do it is you put four end crystals on the end portal, the portal that lets you go back to the overworld and leave the end. I wish he kind of covered that, but sadly he didn't. So there are some things that I feel like were left out that should have been covered. For example, the connection between, like the bigger connection, because yes, there is like a connection with the, you know, the Ender, Ender Dragon head, but I do wish he kind of I wish he kind of mentioned about the whole portal thing with when you defeat it and locks the portal to the end city, which is interesting how that's locked behind a portal. I, I don't know, you know, maybe he thought of that and just didn't include it. But I do wish he did talk about the respawning thing where you can bring back the Ender Dragon. Because, yeah, you can bring it back. So I'm, I wish he kind of talked about that, but maybe it muddled with the theory a little bit because, you know, this is about like, Oh, don't kill the energy. It's the last of its species, but like you could bring it back. So, uh, yeah, I guess that muddled with the theory. I don't, I don't know. I, I wish he covered that at least. But um, yeah. Anyways, goes, those are my thoughts on this video and the theory. I think it's a solid theory with minor flaws. But um, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye.